Hello! So let's finish the look. We just did Flawless Face, and so I thought I would come on and just do kind of a... People are always looking for, you know, they want to look natural, not overly made up. So I wanted to share that with you guys today and what, what I like to do for that look. It involves a bit of a cat eye, but you'll watch it disappear and it will look like falsy lashes. So that's so great. So I did my, um, my foundation and all of the things for the flawless face. So now we're going to move on to a little bit of color. So here's one of the things that I love the most. Um, one of my favorite colors, and it's kind of strange because it's just like no color at all, but it's this biscotti and my pan is almost empty. Like I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel for it. And so what I like to do is just have a nice powdery finish on top of um, my concealer and my foundation that I put on my eyes already. So um, sometimes if you're using a, a liquid or a cream, it will leave your face feeling a little bit wet. And um, if you go to put a powder on that, then it will stick to that spot. So that's why we use the translucent powder all over. And that's kind of why I like to go in and just powder my eyelids um, with a shadow before I start applying any color. So it just blends a little more evenly and it doesn't um, stick to any spots. So I'm making sure I have a nice amount of powder on here. And like I said, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. It's time for a new biscotti. But it's great for highlighting too if you want to use it just right underneath your brow bone because we want to keep it light right there. And um, over here as well, we'll get into that. All right, so I have pink on today, but I don't know if that's what I'm wearing for the rest of the day. So I, I'm just loving the browns, you guys, honestly, and just keeping it simple with the browns, and it just looks really natural. So let's just do that today. I am going to go in with my um, eyelid color. It's called Sand Castle, and it reminds me of that craft paper that we used to do art on when I was in grade school. I don't know if you guys remember that kind of manila colored um, craft paper. That's what it looks like. So it's called Sand Castle. And so it's just giving me a little more color on the eyelid, but I still am keeping it light. So I don't know if you can see that, but we can go back in with a little more color later and just kind of touch things up if things go awry. So, all right. So next I'm going to use our all over powder brush and let's use the hazelnut today. So hazelnut is one of my go-to colors, and I love the mattes, you guys. Um, you can always do, if you want to just do a dash out the door, just a, a swipe of some sparkly across the eyelids is great. I love to accentuate my crease a little bit because I feel like it gives me some depth. So I'll show you here using the hazelnut and just going in right above the crease. And I want to go in with my eyes open because throughout the day you're not walking around with your eyes closed so people can see all of your colors. So I want it to go a little bit higher and it's just starting to create some depth. So I don't want sparkle up there personally. Um, so there, you can kind of see the difference already what's going on. It's giving me some depth and I kind of like that a lot. All right, so do you think we could just do one eye for now? Let's try that and so you guys can see the difference. It's kind of fun. So then um, what I want to do is because we're keeping it um, just kind of natural looking, I'm just going to blend. And so the theory behind this is we want to keep the darker towards the outside and then blend and it will lighten and kind of ombre in to the inside. So if you feel like it's not going how you want it to go and it's getting a little darker on the inside, we'll just take a little biscotti over the top of that. It's all fixable. And another note that I should tell you guys is wait until you've got all of it finished before you throw in the towel. Because um, I've done the pinks and purples before and looked like I had a bad case of um, pink eye <laughs> until I put my mascara and my eyeliner on, then it looked fine. So. So give yourself some grace and just uh, finish the look and see what happens. And then you can take it off if you don't love it. So next I'm going to go in with some Cinnabar with my smudger brush. So this is just a little round brush and it does truly help to have the proper tools, I feel. So I'm going to go right into the crease here and I'm going to get a little bit more and do this little angle down here. So it's kind of like I'm creating a V so I'm going from the crease down to the lash line at a diagonal and then 
swirling it up into my crease a little bit more. Then I'm going to go back in. I have a little towel here. I'm kind of wiping off all the extra color and just soften that up a little bit. So windshield wiper motion, blending it inward, blending it upward a little bit. All right, so we just want it all to be nicely blended. Okay, so not a ton of color, but it certainly looks different than over here. Okay, so this is going to be fun, a little experiment so you guys can see what it looks like with the half of my face done. Okay, so then I am going to go in with our liquid eyeliner. You guys, I love our liquid eyeliner. It's so good. It's so good. So normally, um, every day, because I just love our eyeliner, I'll go all the way across. But today, since we're doing a little bit more natural look, I'm going to start in the middle. And we want to keep it really tight to the lash line. I should have done my other eye because do you guys have that where it's um, easier to do the color on one eye than the other? So I'm just going to stay super tight towards the lash line. And then towards the end, I'm going to use this bottom um, water line for the angle of my upper cat eye. So I'm going to like draw a fake line there and then come in. So that's the angle that I want my cat eye to be going. It looks kind of strange at first, but all you have to do then is go back and fill it in like that. And just go back and meet that line. So it's kind of like a wedge. We want it to be like a wedge. Really thin in the beginning and gets a little bit thicker towards the end. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, that does not look very natural <laughs> to me. But once I get my mascara on, it's just going to make me look like I have really big falsy lashes, which I love that look. I love that look. And so getting the right angle is really important because if you do a straight line out, it's going to look like it's droopy because it's not going the right direction. So we want to lift up. Okay, so next, I love, love, love our lash primer. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, I didn't think that I needed to add an extra step and I thought, oh my gosh, why do I need a lash primer? But I started using it and it just makes my eyelashes feel so good. It makes my mascara go on really nicely. It, um, I never have like a bunch of clumps and um, craziness. It helps keeps my, keep my eyelashes curled throughout the day. I don't have a ton of problems with them uncurling, but I've heard that that really helps a lot of people and it just conditions. So when you take off your mascara later at night with our oil-free eye makeup remover, um, it just comes off more easily because we got to really take good care of that eye area because it's so much um, more delicate than the rest of our skin. Okay, so now let's do a little a mascara. Lash intensity is my favorite, favorite. It just has big a big fluffy brush and it just adds so much to my lashes. Like I've read that it adds up to 200 times the volume, which is crazy. 200 times the volume. So it just gives every little tiny lash a lot of love. And so it's got, um, let's see if you can see that, shorter bristles and longer bristles. So you can really scrub it in. There's the longer ones right there. Here's the shorter ones on top. You can really scrub it in in the bottom and then rotate the brush and pull that color through. So use the long side to kind of pull that color through. Okay. Isn't that amazing? So that cat eye just went away and look at how much different that is from one side to the other. Isn't that amazing? I just love it. So it doesn't look like totally made up and I could go in and lighten up that a little bit or even just do some in my crease, but I always tend to get a little crazy with my color just because I love it so much. So that's a huge difference. So now let's just do, um, let's go in. I got to show you guys this. Isn't it so pretty? So these are, our palettes are completely customizable. So you can do like two long skinnies. You could do a big square. So our pressed powder, our bronzer, our cream to powder come in this style, or you could fill it full of eye color. 
Now these, aren't, this isn't my color of choice, but I just want to show you that you can fill it up with eye color. So you could do six, you could do 12. You could put little um, tools in there, like little eye applicators if you wanted to. So lots and lots of options for that. So let's do a little contour and we'll finish up really quick. Okay, so like I said before, having the proper tools is so handy. So this is our cheek brush. And it's just really great because you can get in and chisel that under area where we want to contour. And so we don't want to confuse our um, contour with our um, bronzer. So the bronzer is shimmery. It had those ribbons of gold in it. I don't know if you saw that. Let me get, show you again. I can find, here it is. It's got ribbons of gold in it. It's so pretty. There's a darker color also. Um, but we don't want to confuse it with our bronzer, which is just a nice matte because we are creating shadow and we don't want reflection down there. So I'm going to start right, you can see the hollow right underneath my um, cheekbone there. And we want the color starting back by our ear and coming forward. So then you can do a little bit of like a color wash on your forehead. Some people like to do a three, like a here and then here, and then some will even come down here. So I don't mind doing a little color wash down there since most of the color is gone. And then I've been using this color. I love it. It's called Desert Rose. It's so pretty. So I'll throw a little bit of that because I feel like I look dead if I don't have any cheek color on and that's not good. And I like to put a little on my forehead too, a little bit on my nose. A little color wash again. And then you can always go back in and blend with a big fluffy brush too. Because we want it all just looking really really natural, not overly made up. So you can see the difference, how much bigger my eye looks just with, with that on. And it doesn't look, like I said, overly made up. And so one of the other things that I will do is um, our eyebrow gel. This is so good. It's like a little um, mascara because I just need to even everything out a little bit. This is really great for sparse lashes or um, really light lashes. We also have a pencil if you need to draw in a little extra hair for you as well. So see the difference there too? It just frames my face and um, just makes it look more put together. All right, you guys, I'll finish the other side on my own, but it kind of helps to um, with the time. So you can see the difference. And so I would probably even go in with a little more of that sand castle if I can find it. I've got four palettes sitting here and probably just kind of clean that up a little bit and take that a little higher since I got a little low with my crease color. There we go. And you could even go in with the biscotti and kind of tone that down a little bit too if you're feeling like you got a little crazy. So all the way into the corner with the light. All right, ladies, there we go. Have a great day. Bye.